So here is an entire muscle. Once again, an individual muscle fiber or muscle cell is wrapped with connective tissue called endomysium. Multiple muscle fibers are all wrapped together in a connective tissue called paramysium. Now the paramysium wrapped fibers are called fascicles. And then fascicles are wrapped together to make an entire muscle and that's surrounded by epimysium. The epimysium continues on as a tendon and inserts into the bone and that insertion is really really strong. A couple of properties of muscle. One is irritability. Muscle is able to receive and respond to stimuli. That's how skeletal muscle is voluntary. You can actually think I want to move this muscle and your brain sends a signal to the muscle allowing it to contract. So that's irritability, the ability to receive and respond to stimulus. Contractility is the ability to shorten when it gets that stimulus. Extensibility is the ability to stretch so it can not only contract but it can stretch. And then elasticity is the ability to return to original length. So contractility allows it to shorten, uh, contract, and then elasticity allows it to go back to its original length when the signal's not there. Okay, let's move down now to looking at an individual muscle fiber or muscle cell. Within that muscle fiber or muscle cell, there are bundles of contractile units called myofibrils. So even within, we're looking at one muscle fiber here, there are bundles of contractile units called myofibrils. The nuclei, see how there are multiple nuclei, they're all kind of shoved to the outside of the cell and um, instead of just calling it the plasma membrane, we have to call it the sarcolemma. So in muscle cells, the plasma membrane is actually called the sarcolemma. There are also sarcoplasmic reticulum is really just smooth endoplasmic reticulum. I think it's easier to see in this picture where the smooth endoplasmic reticulum or the sarcoplasmic reticulum are these little blue uh, lines going throughout the cell. In muscle fibers, sarcoplasmic reticulum holds calcium and the calcium is really important to muscle contraction. So you can see throughout you have all these myofibrils and all around the myofibrils there's sarcoplasmic reticulum holding calcium. The other really interesting feature of skeletal muscle cells is see the little holes on the outside of the plasma membrane? The plasma membrane doesn't just cover the outside. It actually goes down in these, I don't know, tunnels or wells or something that go deep into the cell and you can see it inside the cell those lavender or purple lines. So when uh, a signal comes to the sarcolemma it actually goes down those uh, T-tubules as well to excite the inside of the cell not just the outside. Okay so within an individual myofibril that's the whole pink uh, band that we're looking at there. There are contractile units called sarcomeres. So we're going to look in greater detail at the sarcomeres. Within the sarcomeres they're really made of uh, polymers of individual two different proteins. One protein you can see making up the blue lines here is called the thin filament or actin and the other making up the red lines you can see there is called the thick filament or myosin. If we look at a cross section where we're not looking at the whole myofibril, we're just looking at one sarcomere, you see the structure of the thick filaments uh, still in red are, it, it's kind of like a long band of protein and, uh, and it's got all these little uh, uh, heads at the end. And you can see going all the way around the thick filament, the myosin, there are these uh, little heads. Now those heads can actually attach to the thin filament, the actin. So see how the thin filament is kind of lined up against the thick filament? It's lined up 
and such that the myosin, the heads on the myosin molecule can actually attach to the actin molecules. Here's another way of looking at it even closer where the myosin heads can reach up and bind to the actin filaments. Now they overlap a little bit so you can see here in this diagram that uh, starting out in a relaxed muscle um, the myosin and the actin only overlap a little bit. As the muscle contracts, the myosin heads bind to and pull on the actin to actually pull the actin closer together. See how the sarcomere in B at the bottom is shorter than the sarcomere in A at the top? The sliding filament theory of muscle contraction is that sarcomeres all along the myofibrils and all those myofibrils in a muscle cell all contract at the same time so that each little sarcomere shortening by a little bit actually allows a big muscle to shorten by quite a bit. Here's another picture where you can just see the myosin heads and the actin binding sites and uh, it's showing how when calcium comes into the cell the um, the myosin and the actin pull relative to each other and and allow for the muscle to get shorter and shorter.